The creators of Bluey have a design philosophy that essentially makes their characters shy away from the typical gender stereotypes on an appearance standpoint. All female characters don't sport long eyelashes except for a very select few like Coco and Calypso, and although most adult male characters are a tiny bit more wider with their size, you need to lay off the biscuits. What? You said I was looking good! They don't have many other characteristics that help with this aspect, which is honestly refreshing to see since it's common to see a artist slap a skirt or a bow on a character. Put on this huh? tutu and do a little dance for us, please. What? To deliberately let the viewer know that the creation is in fact a girl. <sighs> okay. But funnily enough, there has always been a way to tell a Bluey's huh? character's gender by their design, and it's always been hidden in plain sight. No, literally, it's in their sight, like where they see things, right in their pupils. This was a discovery made just about five months ago by the Reddit user Mr. Guild Logic, where they somehow discovered that every single adult character in the show has either elongated pupils to show that they are females, or more rounded pupils to show that they are males. As to why they decided to do this, I'm unsure since we never got an official answer on this, but it doesn't quite stop people from speculating where we have some say it's a byproduct of copy-pasting rig models from one character to the next, with the base female and male models originally having this distinction for some reason. And we even have a clever Reddit user that says it might be because of the Aussie idiom that refers to women having long eyes, which is honestly not safe for work. Oh, hang on. Yeah, hang on. So I won't be explaining what that means, but you you are welcome to google it. <laughs> but unfortunately this is a design aspect that once again only is seen in adult characters. This isn't fair! Teenagers and children characters all sport the same exact people no matter what gender they are. But what's really awesome about this particular design choice is that they seem to remain faithful with it even when the adult characters are drawn in different art styles. You can see this with episodes like Dragon where Chili's pupils are longer than Bandit's, with this even being the same in the episode Escape, which is wild to me that they remembered to keep this during these art style changes, showing that they really want to keep this design philosophy no matter where the characters end up despite it being such a small little detail. But it doesn't quite end there, because this is something that you can see on merch that you can buy for the show as well, with the figurines also having this distinction between the adults as well as the plushies. And quite possibly even more beyond that we haven't found yet, but despite this really neat little detail for the adults, there is a specific body language that is universal for the children and adults in the show that the animators do to subtly showcase gender differences, which is how the characters sit. Admittedly, this is an aspect that is sometimes broken by certain characters, which I'll briefly talk about in a bit, but female characters that are sitting forward to the camera are always seen with their legs going in, while male characters in the same exact pose will sit with their legs going out perhaps as a funny nod to man spreading. But what's really stellar about this detail is that even when the kids are imitating the opposite gender, that they'll switch up how they sit. Like in the episode Muffin Cone, Bingo normally will sit like any other female character until she's playing as Bluey's husband. No worries, bye. Where we can see her now sitting like a male character with her legs out. And thanks to the YouTuber Studio J Lamb, they inform me that we can see Bluey doing the same exact thing when she is copycatting her father in the episode fiddly named Copycat. And once we reach the end, we can see Bluey even sitting just like how her dad would, which is a really cute detail for the episode's themes, considering how it explores how children deal with grief and the exploration of this true play, which I have an entire video discussing if you want to check out on the top right, or even check out Jay Lamb's video on Copycat that explores the episode in a different but amazing way. But back to the topic on hand, which is the sitting animation rule and how it's broken by the character Muffin, oh. as well as the character Jack in the episode Explorers, but this instance is to show him being nervous in this particular situation. However, this isn't the only time one of the gender-specific rules set by the studio has been broken, because that cool little eye detail that I talked about earlier is broken by a total of five characters. The model for Vinny, who is never seen in the show but instead on the press release for season 2 of Bluey, is a character that is meant to be male since it's a direct reference to the real-life internet celebrity Vinny from Vine Sauce, but the model sports female eyes. And we also have Jack's dad with female eyes, Jasper's mom with male eyes, and two other side characters pointed out by me by the user AJGB, with this exception as well where this male cricket character has female eyes as well as King Charles having this error as well. And there is one last one that is hard to say since it's blurry so I didn't actually count it for this, 
But if you see this 4K screenshot provided by Music Master, we can see all the wiggles here. Probably doesn't need quite an introduction since the wiggles are quite famous, but the purple wiggle seems to have female eyes despite being a male character. Now because of this inconsistency in the design of Jack's dad and Jasper's mom, we actually have a really popular theory that blew up overnight by the Twitter user Raiden Writes that I'd like to share since it's rather fascinating to think about in my opinion, but before starting, I do want to say that this is a theory. I don't want to see personal attacks or insults directed towards this person since it's honestly a bit spicy for some individuals, but Raiden Writes suggests that the reason why we see this distinction in the pupils for these parents is because that they're transgender. I'm going to be linking their thread in the comments and descriptions since they do a better job at explaining it than I probably will, but a lot of people find this theory to be really positive since it makes them feel seen slash represented by these characters. A leading reason why they feel so strongly about the theory is that despite multiple episodes, Jack's dad has never seen a fix in this character design as well as even his concept art having these female eyes. They go to say that Ludo Studio is often very punctual with their designs and is known to make subtle choices in their art to allude to things or even encourage the audience to speculate on the aspects within the show. Once again, I wish to remain respectful for this individual as well as others who believe it, since it really seems to make them happy and feel seen, so let's try to remain peaceful on the topic, because at the end of the day, it is just a theory. I will admit that although I love seeing representation in shows, if we do get a trans rep in the show, I'd want it to be told narratively with the same grace as episodes like Onesies and Army, to name a few, since that's what Bluey does best. If others wish to use the people to support their headcanons, I don't see any harm in it, but I feel like me explaining my philosophy on expression and art is a topic for a completely different video or maybe even a Q&A segment. Go! Why don't you have a wife? Whoa. I know this was a rather unorthodox video from my standards, since it's not like my typical long video essays, but I've been dying to talk about this pupil design choice since it was discovered five months ago, and I thought it'd be a small, nice video right before my next one, since it's been a while <laughs> since I uploaded. This next one that I'm alluding to is a really special one that I'm collaborating with another Bluey tuber, so I can't wait for y'all to see it. And I just want to do a quick thank you for the members who make these videos possible for supporting me as little as $5 bucks a month, which are Rick and Glacius, Hogsmead, Jonathan, Tasuga, Mr. Kitty, Zach Stryker, Zachary Stromet, Snowy, Tom of Essex, Jonathan Pate, NZ Gorham, Fluff Paws, Tyler from Texas, and Dawson Gray. But I'm gonna end this short video here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I hope y'all have a great day. <laughs> bye bye.